Doesn't this look amazing this morning? How many love your RTTN team? Come on, tell them you love them today. Amazing folk. Amazing folk. You know, we may play the video of all of us trying to dance on the way out. We understood it upset some religious people, and so we'll probably play it again. Amen. Um, we are family. Amen. That's what today is all about. It's about we are family. And I wanted to do something on a Sunday morning that I don't think we've ever done. And I wanted to talk about um, Redemption to the Nation's Church and take an entire church through Connect Track on a Sunday morning. And there's several reasons why. Number one, we've never taken church membership in our new church. So Redemption to the Nation's Church, while we're all family, today's going to be an opportunity for everybody who wants to join the church. I have been inundated with people who want to join the church and so I want you to know today is going to be about becoming part of this church family and understanding what we believe, what we teach, where we've been, where we're going and how you and your family can be a part and get connected if you're not already. Um, all the ushers are going to help us now by passing out um, packets to each of you. It's going to take a few seconds, so if you'll go ahead and start doing that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ushers, for your amazing help today. You guys are amazing. Uh, yeah, come on. That's right. We'll give honor to the ushers. Or as Sister Bates would say, the ushers. Okay. Um, while, they're, while they're passing those things out, uh, you're going to learn today about the team of this church about structure going forward. I can't possibly answer every single question you have. In fact, I may even create questions today in the presentation. While we're not going to have question and answer in church time this morning, uh, if there's anything we can do from this point forward to make things clear or to clarify, we want you to know that's why we're here and what we want to do. Also, I want to tell you, while this whole entire presentation should probably take about 35, 45 minutes, you don't want to leave early today because I have a I have an amazing surprise that I will announce at the end of church, uh, at the end of this presentation for all of you. And, um, and those who are going to become part of the family today and join the church, we have a gift for each of you. And so you don't want to leave till you find out what that is. And I'm doing my very best Perry Stone impersonation now, uh, trying to get you to come back after the commercial break. Okay, so stay here with us and uh, you're going to be glad you did. Let's get into this. The first thing, and they're still passing them out, but that's okay. You can, you can listen to me till you get yours. The first thing I want to talk about this family is our vision. Redemption to the nation's church. I want you to know what vision is. Vision is a picture of where a church is going. And it's, it's like when you're sitting in an airport and you're getting ready to get on a plane and you're sitting at a terminal and they start calling the name of the place you're getting ready to go. I've been in many airports before and there have been sometimes I've been at the wrong terminal and I didn't know I was in the wrong terminal until someone said, this plane is getting ready to go to, you know, Detroit. And I wasn't wanting to go to Detroit. Okay, you, we got some Piston fans in the house over here. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what I stir up sometimes. Um, and I didn't want to go to Detroit, I wanted to go to the Bahamas, right? So I had to listen to the direction and understand I'm not in the right place. That's what vision is. Vision tells where we're getting ready to go. Shows a picture of what the, the future could look like. And if what I'm getting ready to just declare over this house doesn't bear witness with your heart, it doesn't mean you're a bad person and, and we're right or that we're bad and you're right. It just means it may not fit. How many know fit is important for a local church? You need to go where you and your family can fit. And the vision of this house and I hope you understand what I'm saying. The vision is not negotiable. We're not going to have a vote today on the vision. This is who we are. This is what we're doing and this is where we're going. And our vision at Redemption to the Nation's Church is to be the most loving church in the world. I just released that over this house. That when people pull on this property, come on, how many know in a world like we live, we need a church full of love, right? Yeah. Our express intent, the vision of this church, is to be the most loving church in the world. 
And I don't know that we'll ever arrive there, but every morning we get up, we will be called and we will be led and we will pursue that desire to express and to show the love of God to every man, woman, boy, and girl that walks on this property. We want to show love because I believe God is love. And I believe if His love is in this place, God is in this place. And because God is in this place, we're going to love people. If you believe that, say amen. amen. The vision of this house is to be the most loving church in the world. People from every kindred, every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. People from all races, all walks of life, all places on the socioeconomic ladder. Millionaires, welfare, everybody in between. We want them to know that they're not only welcome, but can be part of this family. And I want people who are hurt and people put back together, people who are wounded and people who are healed and people who are lost and people who are found to find this place, a place where they can be loved. And so if you're going to be a part of Redemption to the Nation's family, it's going to be very important that you embrace the vision of this church and not just embrace it, but help be a part of it. If we're going to be the most loving church in the world, it's not because Devin and I are the most loving pastors in the world. It's because we have the most loving people in the world. From the team all the way down to the youngest baby, let's instill everyone in everyone this vision to be the most loving church in the world. How many think that would please God? Amen. Number two, purpose. So vision answers what the future looks like. Purpose answers what are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, why do we come together? Why do we um, have Sunday morning services? Why do we receive offering and tithe? Why do we have children's church? Why do we do outreach? Why... Why do, we, why do we do all this? And there's one real purpose for us doing all this, and it's very simple. Our purpose in existing is to demonstrate the kingdom of God. The Lord gave us a promise a number of years ago, 10 years ago. He said, Kevin, I want your church to look like heaven on earth. How many believe that God would be pleased if he could find a place where it looked like what was going on in heaven was going on on earth? And we're not here to build... A monument we're not even here to, to 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 create something unto ourselves that dies with us we're here for one reason to demonstrate the kingdom of God in everything this team does we must ask the question and in everything you do we must ask the question are we demonstrating the kingdom of God because kingdom living as we've talked before is very different than natural worldly living come on you are kingdom citizens amen and we believe that as kingdom citizens, we create a culture of the kingdom that people can come in and plug into and find the life of God. This is not just a church. This is an expression of a church as we demonstrate the kingdom of God. Churches exist not as an end to themselves, but as a conduit through which the kingdom of God can be demonstrated and expressed. And so you and I need to understand our place as a church. We need to understand that God has called us Uniquely, as a, a, an ecclesia, a called out people. But the reason he's called us out is to demonstrate in the earth what the kingdom of heaven looks like on earth. You and I should demonstrate the kinds of lives that are different from people than do not belong to the kingdom of God. If you belong to the kingdom, how many know our lives should be different? Can you say amen? So our purpose is to demonstrate the kingdom of God. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about the culture of our church because culture is the water you swim in. Say, culture is the water we swim in. So if I were a fish and, and, and I was trying to, to function and live and breathe, how many know fish do not do well outside of water? Right? You have to put a fish in the water. And when you do put a fish in the water to swim, the fish doesn't wake up every morning thinking, I'm in water. The fish wakes up every morning saying, this is how I survive, this is how I live, this is how I operate, right? Right? The culture is, is that unsaid but definite atmosphere that can be felt and known by the people that are in it. I want you to understand the, con the kind of culture we're trying to create in this house. Because it's very important that as part of this culture you embrace what we want this culture to be. If all we do is have a heart to desire, a, a desire rather to be a particular kind of church but you and I don't share that together... We don't, we're living a pipe dream, right? we got to do this together. And so I want you to understand culture this morning. There are, uh, there are five or six things here that I want you to understand about the kind of culture we are called to create here. Number one, it's, an, it's a culture of encounter. Say encounter. 
Let me read these for you because they're very important and I want you to hear them. This is the kind of thing we value and the kind of culture we pray God would give us in this church. Number one, we value God's glory. We pursue His presence in our homes and come together as a body to encounter God together. We are led by His presence rather than programs. Acts 2 came before Acts 6. What does that mean? It means in Acts 2 there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 6 they had to put structure in the church so that the church could be strong and vibrant as it continued to grow. But programs don't produce life, only God produces life. And so while we'll have programs and while we will implement structure and while we will do the best that we can to be as excellent as possible, at the end of the day, we prefer and value the glory of God above any program we could put in place. And we believe it is the oil of the Holy Spirit and the power of God that transforms lives. So encounter is what we did a few moments ago in worship. How many encountered God's presence this morning? If you didn't, we want to make sure you understand that when you come to this house, it is not just to experience something. Because you can experience something that you don't encounter. Right? We've all been to to, um, the uh, aquarium downtown or at Wrigley's. Aquari- Ripley's, Ripley's, uh, Ripley's Aquarium in Gatlinburg, right? You experienced the shark tank, but you didn't encounter the shark. Because you can see something in an experience that you don't have to get up close and personal with. But an encounter is a very different... If you encountered a shark, you would tell about it if you lived after it, right? Well, the good news about God is not only can He be experienced, He can be encountered. And we want a culture where people can encounter God face to face. Number two, we want a culture where we prefer mission over maintenance. You want to help me, babe? you have anything? Okay, just, just wink at me if you need something. <laughs> um, we prefer missions over maintenance. Say that with me. We prefer mission over maintenance. Now let's explain what that means. Let's, let's acknowledge the fact that both are necessary in a local church, right? You've got to have maintenance in a local church because maintenance takes care of those who are saved and part of the family, right? You need visitation in the hospital. You need, we need to send flowers to somebody who had surgery. We do weddings for people getting married. We provide counseling. For, we have counselors that we provide counseling uh, for people who need counseling. All those things are maintenance, right? We have to take care of the body. But if the kingdom in this house, if this house were a two-sided coin and one was mission. And one was maintenance. So maintenance is taking care of everybody. Mission is going after the lost. If the coin has to fall on one or the other, in this house, it falls on mission every single time. That doesn't mean we will not do maintenance. It just means at the end of the day, we will leave the 99 to go after the one that is lost and dying and needs the Lord. And it's really important you understand that because it's not that we don't take care of problems in the church or people who have problems in the church or even people who are problems in the church. At the end of the day, we want to win souls and expand the kingdom. And so you need to understand it is the heartbeat of this house to make sure that we are missional and not just pacifying and babysitting heaven-bound Christians but really have a thrust. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just making sure you understand where we're going. A a thrust to go out and win the lost and love people. Because if, if you have to be the biggest deal in the church, I can point you to a hundred other churches in the area. In this house, there is one big deal. His name is Jesus Christ. And that's the way we're going to keep this thing forever. Okay? Number three. We want to embrace a culture of destiny. We prefer our destiny over our history. Our future is greater than our past. We will revisit and glean from and embrace where we've come from, right? But we will always doing it looking forward to what God has in store for us in our future. In other words, do not expect this church to camp out in the past. I'm thankful for the past. I am thankful for every seasoned man and woman of God 
who built a bridge so that my generation could cross over and experience God, a, a, a Pentecostal move of God in this this very postmodern culture that we live in. But I want to tell you, we cannot just camp out on yesterday's fire. We have got to be a people who, who will, on one hand, embrace where we've come from. We reach toward where he's taking us to. And we will never be trapped in the, in the traditionalism. I didn't say there aren't traditions we, we, we don't have. We, how many love traditions, right? I love traditions, but we're not going to get stuck in traditionalism. And so we prefer where we're going as uh, uh, compared to as things stuck as where we were. And it's a place where you can be free from your past. And in this house, we embrace your destiny over your history. All right. And this is a place that you will not be categorized by what you came out of, but instead where you're going. So you that's what preach. we embrace. I mean, you said two sentences and they're all stirred up already. I'll just keep talking. Our, our joke in our house is somebody has to just pastor, okay? You get to be the prophet and do all the awesome things. I'll just pastor the people, okay? I'm just kidding. It's a joke. Um, so we're, uh, we, we embrace destiny over history. Number four, we prefer and embrace the unpredictable over our plans. Unpredictable is not the same as unprepared. God is sovereign and will do what he wants to on his timetable despite what we have prepared to do. We will remain flexible in our pursuit to follow God. I have a saying and the staff knows it, the team knows it. Blessed are the flexible for they shall not be bent out of shape. It's really important you understand this, that we will have things on the calendar sometimes that we have prepared diligently for and we have worked hard to make happen. And we have all walked through this enough, and especially those who have been here a long time, we've all walked through this enough to know there have been things we worked hard on that did not work out the way we prepared for. The glory came and God did something we were not prepared for. And we used to have a nervous breakdown and get bent out of shape about it. And now we just say to God, be the glory. We will prepare, work hard, work diligently, and execute with excellence. But you need to understand this about this house and this culture. At the end of the day, we will embrace the unpredictable glory and awesomeness of God every single time he decides to demonstrate his glory. That's just how we're going to operate. Okay? Two more. Oh, what happened? Um, synergy. Say synergy. We are a house of multi-generational and multicultural synergy. What that means is we like seasoned people. That's, we don't have old people here. We have seasoned saints, right? We, we, we love seasoned saints and we love the millennials and we love your babies. We love red and yellow and black and white. I'm just setting it in order if you don't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten doors to find to get to your car quickly because this house is going to be a house of multi-generational, multicultural synergy. And let me just fix this. Let me fix this because I hear this foolishness all the time. God is colorblind. God is not colorblind. God intentionally put color in the earth and in this house so that we could all celebrate diversity and the, and the goodness of God moving in all of us. We're not colorblind either. I feel something right there. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to do a sermon series on that. I feel it. We're going to maximize and leverage our diversity generationally and even racially and economically. We're going we're gonna to leverage that for our benefit rather than it being something that tears us apart. And I want you to know that synergy is a very important thing. When Peter and John ran together to the tomb, Peter was an older man, John was the younger man. 
But an empty tomb is a good place for two generations to come back together. And I want you to understand that the resurrected Christ is how we come together on Sunday. It's what brings us all together and makes us one. And we're going to have synergy. I, I intend on being intentional about breaking down every wall in this city in the church. In the church. I, I'm not just talking about in the city. I'm talking about the church is still divided in this city. And if it don't happen first in the church, it's not going to happen in the city. And it is going to happen in the church. And it is going to happen in the city. And we are going to see heaven kiss earth. And we are going to see the races come to Come on, if you don't like it down here, you are not going to like it up there. We need each other. We love one another, so there'll be this synergy. Number whatever, dream. Dream. Say six. Here it is. This is the promise God gave us. Twelve years ago, I was laying on my floor in my first office under my desk. The power of God was so strong in that room that day. And I heard the Lord say to me, Kevin, what would you do if lack is not your problem? And I have been declaring every, every time God brings it to my memory for the last 12 years, I've declared it over this house. It's become a word, a sentence, a phrase you will hear frequently. Lack is not our problem. Our God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And I believe in Jesus' name we ought to dream big. God is good and we are responsible to dream his big dreams without the boundaries of lack. God, I wish I had one witness on that right there. Where he guides, he will faithfully provide for us. And I want to say this to you because it's part of the, uh, of the covenant form you'll see in just a few moments. Not, well, it's not just that God will provide by dropping it out of heaven, although he could, right? God's going to provide it by blessing our people. And our people are going to be a conduit through which the resources of heaven come into the earth so that the kingdom of heaven can be advanced in the earth. So how many, now let me read this again, how many want to be a part of the dream? How many want you and your family to be able to be a part of the dream? Come on, say amen in here this morning. Doctrine. It has sort of been floated around and I've heard a bunch of, not a bunch, but some people saying, you know, now that we have left the denomination, we're changing our doctrine. I want you to hear the words coming out of my mouth. We are not changing our doctrine. Okay? Doctrine doesn't need to be changed. I, in fact, I didn't join the denomination I did because I discovered something in their doctrine that, that was different than anything I already believed. I was trying to find a group of people who believed what I believed the Bible taught. Our doctrine has not changed and it's not going to change because the doctrine is simply an understanding of what Scripture teaches. And I don't have any new revelation from Scripture now that I'm not in a denomination anymore. Jesus is the same. Come on, He didn't change, right? And we're not going to change our doctrine and start getting weird and, 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 and funky. I don't, I don't do that. Doctrine is, we're going to believe what we's all, we've always believed about Jesus. And that sounds old-fashioned. Well, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we get over that, right? I'm, instead of me trying to read all this, we have an elder and a leader in our church who has just a romantic voice. And I think, I'm kidding about the romantic part. He is going to come and he's going to read it in his European English accent and he's going to read our doctrine on what we believe so he'll start each one with we believe and at the end if this is what you and i believe we're going to stand up when he gets through and give god praise would you help me welcome elder nathan brown we believe in the holy bible and the only bible is the authoritative word of god it alone is the final authority in determining all doctrinal truths and church operation. In its original writing, it is inspired, infallible, and inerrant. We believe in the Trinity. There is one God, eternally existing in three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit. These are co-equal and co-eternal. We believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is, the, is God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. On earth, Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. He is the only man ever to have lived a sinless life. He was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, performed miracles, died on the cross for mankind, and thus atoned for our sins through the shedding of his blood. He rose from the dead and on the third day, according to scriptures, ascended to the right hand of the Father, and we and will return again in power and glory. We believe in the virgin birth. Jesus Christ was conceived by God the Father through the Holy Spirit, the third person of the, the Trinity. In the Virgin's Mary's room, therefore, he is the Son of God. We believe in redemption. Man was created good, upright, but through voluntary transgression he failed, fell. His only hope for redemption is in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We believe in regeneration. For anyone to know God, regeneration by the Holy Spirit is, an absolute, is absolutely essential. We believe in salvation. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection. Salvation is a gift from God, not a result of our good works or any human efforts. We believe in repentance. Repentance is the commitment to turn away from sin in every area of our lives and to follow Christ, which allows us to receive his redemption and to be regenerated by the Holy Spirit. Thus, through re repentance, we receive forgiveness of sins and the appropriate salvation. We believe in sanctification. Sanctification is the ongoing process of yielding to God's word and his spirit in order to complete the development of Christ's character in us. It is through the present ministry of the Holy Spirit and the word of God that the Christian is enabled to live a godly life. We believe in Jesus' blood. The blood that Jesus Christ shed on, Cal on Calvary was, the, was sinless and 100% sufficient to cleanse mankind of all sin. Jesus allowed himself to be punished, both our sinful and our sins, enabling those who believe to be free from the penalty of sin, which is death. We believe in Jesus Christ indwells in all believers. Christians are people who have been invited through Lord Jesus Christ to come and live inside them by the Holy Spirit. They relinquish the authority of their lives over to him, thus making Jesus Christ the Lord of their life as well as their Savior. They put their trust in what, was, what Jesus accomplished for them. Then he died. He was buried and rose again from the dead. We believe in the baptism and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Given at Pentecost, it is the promise of the Father sent by Jesus after his ascension to empower the church to preach the gospel throughout the whole earth and that the outward visible sign of the Spirit baptism is speaking in tongues. Additionally, the Holy Spirit is manifested through a variety of spiritual gifts to build, sanctify the church, demonstrate the validity of the resurrection, and to confirm the power of the gospel. The Bible lists these gifts are not necessarily exhaustive, and the gifts may occur in various different combinations. All believers are commanded to earnestly desire the manifestation of the gifts in their lives. These gifts always operate in harmony with Scripture and should never be used in violation of biblical parameters. We believe in the church. The church is the body of Christ, the habitation of God through the Spirit with divine appointments for the fulfillment of Jesus' great commission. Every person who is born of the Spirit is an integral part of the church as a member of the body of believers. There is a spiritual unity of all believers in, Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in water baptism. Following the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the new convert is commanded by the word of God to be baptized in water in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Lord's Supper, a unique time of communion in the presence of God when elements of bread and grape juice, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ are taken in remembrance of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. We believe in marriage. We believe marriage is defined in the, as a biblical covenant, a sacred bond between one man and one woman. 
instituted and publicly entered in before God. We believe in healing of the sick. Healing of the sick is illustrated in the life and ministry of Jesus and included the commission of Jesus to his disciples. As stated in scripture, it is the sign that follows them that believe. It is also a part of Jesus' work on the cross and one of those gifts in the spirit. We believe in God's will for provision. It is the Father's will for believers to become whole, healthy, and successful in all areas of life. But because of the fall, many may not receive the full benefits of God's will while on earth. The fact, though, should never present all believers from seeking full benefits of Christ's provision in order to better serve others in the area of spiritual, mental, and emotional, physical, and financial. We believe resurrection in the resurrection. Jesus Christ was physically resurrected from the dead and in glorified body in three days after his death on the cross. In addition, both the saved and the lost will be resurrected. They are saved to the resurrection of the life and that they are lost to the resurrection of the eternal damnation. We believe in heaven. Heaven is the eternal dwelling place of all believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We believe in hell. After living one life on earth, the unbelievers will be judged by God and sent to hell where they will be eternally tormented with the devil and the fallen angels. We believe in the second coming. Jesus Christ will physically and visibly return to earth for the second time to establish his kingdom. This, uh, this will occur at a date undisclosed by scriptures. That is what we believe. Amen. We believe the word. We believe the word. Amen. Thank you, Elder. Tremendous job. I think it's healthy for our church to hear those things so that they know what doctrine we will believe and teach in this house. And those are the tenets of our faith. And um, I'm grateful for you receiving those. Elder, we're grateful you read those. I'd like to introduce the team to you briefly, if we could. We're going to go through these slides, and uh, their slide will come up on the screen, and um, then you can clap or whatever you want to do, however, however you want to do it. They'll sign autographs later. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, first, Kevin and Devin Wallace. This is Devin, and I'm Kevin, and we're here to say hello this morning. We love each of you. And... Um, serve as lead pastors of the church. Jonathan Nash, whose wife is Betsy, holding little Noah over there. John is our chief operating officer. Um, Deithra Seymour. Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, Jesus, it just... Technology. Okay, here we go, there we go. The global team, pardon me, I missed the global team. Uh, that's the global team. We talked about them a little bit when we made the transition. Global team is responsible for making sure of DNA transfer, DNA decision making in any campus when we began to launch other campuses out of this campus. And so that, that group of leaders help make decisions and make sure that each campus will feel the same and are responsible for really uh, uh, decision making that will impact the, uh, uh, the continual advancing of the kingdom through this house. That's the global team. and. You can see their pictures there. Many of them are going to be shown here in just a moment. You can go to the next slide. We will go to our Global Human Resources Director, Miss Deithra Seymour. Come on. Wave at everybody. Our Finance Assistant, the illustrious Tammy Cross. Where are you yet, young lady? Oh, come on. Little higher wave, little higher wave. We want to see you. Okay. Ryan Hodges, our Global Finance Director, he and Casey are sitting here this morning. Chris Horvath, uh, who is my uh, Personal Assistant and Safety Director. Chris, where are you sitting? Uh, Crystal, his wife, is actually the principal of our Redemption Kids School of Ministry. Crystal, it's great to have you. 
This next young lady, I call her Double A because her name is Anna Ayers. She's number 13 on the scorecard, but number one in your heart. Remember that. She is the executive administrative assistant to all that happens here. Can we say thank you? Her husband, Dustin, is with her. Jeff Fraley, who is our global facility and transportation director. Pardon? My dad, who was not on... Where did he go? Where is he? Okay, he's probably out cleaning. If you see him scrapping metal after church, that's why we call him Sanford and Son. But my dad, who is the facilities and grounds director, or, or, or employee of the church, Eddie Wallace, sorry. And just a minute ago, I, Cheryl Fraley is sitting with her sweet husband, and I just wanted to say, Miss Cheryl, I did not forget you. I'm trying to keep all this in my brain. Our global worship pastors, John and Jocelyn Brockman. Can we give it up for John and Joss? Where are you guys at? Okay. And she's not able to be here because she just had a precious baby and Aloe is doing so well. But Tobin and Jojo Shoemate, can we tell Tobin and Jojo we love them? He's been a friend of mine for probably 17, 18 years. We used to travel. I preached. He sang and played piano player, music director, and event coordinator of our church. Micah Sakalas, where are you, sir? I love you, Micah. Um, this next young man, ladies, he is still single. Micah's still single, too, but that doesn't mean anything for y'all, too, right? Um, Deithra is single. Deithra is single. Listen. If you, if you have an in, just talk to me first, okay? Come see me first. LeBron Arnwine, can you come over and give me your best bass voice? Come on, run over here, come on. Your wife could be in the pew today. Come on, seriously, come on. Say, what's up, church? What's up, church? That's it. That's it. I love you. <laughs> Oh, this next young man has been on staff with me longer than anyone else on this stage. He's a true son of this house and a brother in the faith, and I love him with all my heart. He and his wife, Lisa, have led the youth department of this church for almost 13 years. She is at home. She just gave birth, River, to River Gosselman. Would you help me welcome and tell Pastor Josh Gosselman how much you love him? Sitting with him at this table, a couple and a family that Devin and I just call so precious. They're amazing people. He has an amazing testimony. She, they both have such an amazing anointing and grace on their life to minister to our young people. Can we tell Pastor Quantel and Kaylee Lindsay how much we love them? Come on. Several years ago, we needed a children's pastor when at the Ottawa campus, and we looked high and low and searched east to west. I am so thankful. They are two of the most passionate, spirit-filled, spirit-led leaders in the kingdom of God, and we are privileged to have them here. Help me thank God for Chris and Amy Ryan, our global children's pastors. we clapping for you. And y'all know Mercy is real because I hired a Florida Gator fan when I hired him, so y'all know Mercy is real. I'm sitting at Sitting at that same table is our Redemption Kids pastor here at this campus. Her name is Mariah Stanley. She's with her husband, James. They have a baby boy named Ezra. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, and then we have Miss, Miss, she is single as well, Miss Fancy Brannock. Where are you at, young lady? Fancy Brannock, come on, our toddler kids pastor. The next couple, they probably have been with us second longest uh, of anyone on the stage. They've been here for probably 12 or 13 years with Devin and I. Uh, I, I knew them before they had children. Now they have two beautiful babies, Noah and Naya. And uh, we're honored to have as our Global Connections pastor, Pastor Wilmari, her husband Andy, are on the stage. They're with us together. The people you hardly ever see, but without them you would never see anything. Can we give it up for our global production director, Dave Gosnell, right back there. Dave, we love you. And you never... Okay, Chad, can you do this for me? 
I'll give you time to get back there. Can you run out from behind the stage? Where's he's, he's out of town. Never mind, Chad. Chad, I was just kidding. We're showing a picture of you now, Chad. Okay, we hope you enjoyed this shout-out that you're not here to receive. Chad Madden, who is our video director. Um, and then we have our share department led by my brother in Christ, my brother at Thanksgiving, my brother-in-law, my brother in love, Gary and Jennifer Keelan. Can we tell them right here on the front row? They lead our global share department. This young man and his wife have been precious to Devin and I. He sat with me at a restaurant one day, me, him, and my brother, Joe Riggs, and we literally dreamed up the RISE program and talked about how sports could impact children in this inner city. RISE is R-I-S-E. It stands for Redemption Intramural Sports Experience. And, uh, and if you saw my Facebook post yesterday, you saw the gymnasium. We just got the floor done this week. It's going to be amazing. Can you help me thank God for Pastor Roger and Tia Woods, our city share pastors? This young lady has been a part of our family ever since we got married. In fact, she was a mentor to Devin. Uh, and uh, we were so honored year, several years ago when her and her precious baby girls came to live with us uh, here in Chattanooga and be a part of this church. And yesterday, where are you at? Yesterday we had how many at Sidewalk Sunday School? 120 families, people, kids came to Sidewalk Sunday School. Can you help me thank God for the ministry of Pastor Anna Phillips? Come on. And then Pastor Lee and Marcia Nash, who are not um, here, they're out this week, but Lee and Marcia Nash, he is our global share, which means our world missions pastor and our pastoral care pastor. And we have also added to that pastoral care team a man that has been with me since my first Sunday year here, uh, 14 years ago, 15 years ago. He's like family to Devin and I and our kids, Elder Patrick Kelly, who also, where's he at? I thought you were in this couch. Pat, thank you for all you do, sir. The next woman, the next woman, these are integrated auxiliaries. I'm going to explain what that is in just a moment. Uh, the next woman, she is the apple in my eye. She's the jam in my jelly roll. She's the, ch never mind, okay. She is the director of the Zion Project and has birthed so much of what happens here. God has birthed it through her heart. I'm honored to be her husband, Devin Wallace, who is the d director of the Zion Project. I love you. Rescuing ladies and some gentlemen from human trafficking, a powerful ministry. Next on this stage is Dr. Jason Stubbs, the director of Redemption School of Ministry. He and his precious wife, Lindsay, who actually works at the Zion Project. He is from the Bahamas. He did not get that accent in South Georgia. So, but we are honored to have him on this team and the amazing things that are happening at Redemption School of Ministry. Give it up for Dr. Stubbs. And as I introduced to you a moment ago, uh, Miss Crystal Horvath, who is Redemption, uh, Director of Redemption Kids School of Ministry, and this Miss Ma Maria Feliciano, where are you at, young lady? Miss Maria Feliciano, married to Moises, and she directs our preschool um, throughout the week. Come on, let's tell her how much we love her. So this is the team, family. This is the team, and I want you to know their faces, and I want you to know their hearts. Uh, we work hard every week. I know some people think the only thing we do is um, uh, the only thing. Oh, thank you. The RSM team. I knew I missed something. If you are part of the RSM team and you're on the stage, stand up. I want to recognize you. Antea, stand up. Nate, stand up. Aaron, stand up. This amazing team take care of the Redemption School of Ministry. Who else? Allie, you're so... Tiny, I didn't even see you. Allie and Nate and Antea and Aaron help us make RSM the amazing school that it is. And I'm so honored for all of their amazing hard work. I want to quickly go over government, uh, the government of redemption to the nation's church. Now, this is you're going to have to listen with some logistical ears. This, this is not spiritual, but it is very spiritual. For the next few minutes, um, I want you to just... Grab what I'm going to say because it's important for you to understand glory rests on government. Glory rests upon government. God always establishes government before he releases his glory. 
And I want you to understand that it is important that you know what kind of government this house will sit in. Because the government of this house will determine the kind of glory, I believe, released upon this house. And um, it's important. I'm not going to go into things that may confuse you or may not make sense to you. I think most of you will understand what I'm going to say. When you leave a denomination, you have to structure the local church in a way that it is protected and kept safe. And not only that it is protected and kept safe, but that the leadership of that church becomes the covering of that house. Now, I kept saying to men who are over me and the Lord, we need a covering, we need a covering, we need a covering. And, and one of them sat with Devin and I a couple weeks ago, and he said to me, you need to be, you need accountability, and I know you want that. And you need to hear me say to you, for your sake and for your trust and for your comfort, I do want this house to have accountability. And as I'm going to show you, it does have accountability. I have accountability. Devin has accountability. Every person on this stage has accountability. But when we talk about, well, what is our covering? Well, I believe moving forward that, and this is the hardest thing for me to say, it, where we're going, it released Devin and I to become a covering for this house and for the people in it. And that doesn't mean that we think we're your only covering and, and that Jesus doesn't have you covered, but, but everything works and operates in the kingdom in order and in government. Amen? And rather than run out and join another thing as a covering, I want accountability for this church, for my life, for our team. I want the church to have complete confidence and peace that if anything stupid or crazy ever happened with me or Devin, or that there would be mechanisms that would protect this church. But in terms of spiritually covering you, I want you to hear me say in love and humility today, we have you covered. And we want to provide that prayer covering, that spiritual covering, that, that truth covering the preaching of the word and the living of our lives in such a way that you have confidence in the walk that we have before God. So things have changed a little bit. You need to understand, first of all, there are several ways a local church can operate. And however you embrace um, church leadership, I, I, I want to make sure I'm clear as to how this church will operate and function going forward. There are essentially three ways a church can operate. Democracy, autocracy, or theocracy. Okay, so if you're taking notes, you should write this down. A democracy is a congregationally led church. Okay, a congregationally led church means we don't do anything until everybody votes on it. Okay, and that is not the kind of church we have here. Um, number one, because I'm not voting on every time we want to paint a color on a wall, and I'm not voting on every time we want to put a sign out in the front of the road. Uh, there's some things you just got to take care of, and and not everything needs to be voted on. Okay, now, major things, major financial decisions, we will have business meetings and the church will come and be presented with the information and the church will have an opportunity to speak into that process. But when it comes to, um, uh, do I have a vote, do I have a say? Absolutely you do. And we hear, we want to hear your heart. But at the end of the day, we have to make decisions that we believe please God. And sometimes pleasing people doesn't always please God. And so I, I, I want you to hear me say that this structure may look different than you anticipated or it may look the same as you anticipated. It is, it is slightly different than what we came out of. And, and I just want to show, show you this uh, structure chart so that you understand how the, the, um, the decisions are made and the authority will flow, okay? So the first thing you will see is Kevin and Devin Wallace. Okay, let me go back. Pardon me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's reminding me. So you have a democracy which is the congregationally led church. You have an autocracy, which is one man who is autonomously making decisions and, and has no advice, no wisdom, no, uh, uh, no covering or accountability with anybody. Okay, that's close to a dictatorship. Um, that is not what we are either. We're not a democracy or an autocracy. We are a theocracy. And a theocracy means that God is at the top of the ladder and that he puts set people in places of leadership. And that if those people who are put in leadership have a pure heart and are humble and love people, they understand how to build teams and structures around them that will provide wisdom and counsel in decision-making moments in time, and that they will not want to violate, not only will they not want to violate the word, they will not want to violate the integrity, the purity of the house. Okay, so this is a theocracy. God is at the top. 
He's not just on this screen. He's above it all, right? God is at the top. And at this place and season in our life, we believe God has placed us as the leaders and pastors of this church. I'm humbled by that, but I have to run with that because it's the plan and purpose of God for our lives. Now, out beside Kevin and Devin Wallace, you will see a a group called Apostolic Leadership Team. Okay, That is a group of, of, I wouldn't say necessarily well-known, although most of these men are very well-known, but these are men of high caliber, men of prayer, men with prophetic insight and anointing. And I want you to understand that um, these, at this point, five men will have the responsibility of, of holding Devin and I accountable, checking on us. In fact, if you look, in, look on, your, on your, um, your handout, you'll see strengthened by, is that right? Is that where I am? No, no, I'm going ahead of it, but let me just go ahead of it. Um, number three. Number three, it says strengthened by. This is going to be a little bit out of order, but you'll see why in a minute because it flows better with the chart that's on the screen. Number three, this house will be strengthened by an apostolic leadership team. If you're taking notes, you can write that in. These ministers are kingdom leaders of respected congregations or ministries who love pastors Kevin and Devin, who love redemption to the nation's church, and are willing to provide spiritual accountability and godly counsel for its lead pastors. They may be called upon to provide accountability and instruction for the lead pastors if requested to do so by the staff elders or the trustees. So in other words, if Devin and I, I'm just saying this, God forbid it ever happened, but if Devin and I ever fell off the wagon and just started living and acting crazy, the trustees or anyone on this stage could request a meeting with the apostolic leadership team to present any issues, challenges, or problems that we are presenting for this congregation. Now, I told this body this, our leaders this, this past week, and I'll make sure you understand this. The Bible is very clear that when you bring an accusation against an elder, it should not be entertained without two or more witnesses. That's not my rule. That's not our rule. That's what the Bible says. And the reason Paul wrote that to Timothy, in my opinion, is to protect the office of the pastor from someone trying to scandalize the name and the, and the role and the, and the office itself. And so Devin and I want to live above reproach, but we are not above accountability. And if something were to happen in our lives, God forbid, that became detrimental or, or to this team or to this church, then the lead pastors of this church... Or the trustees themselves could request a meeting with the global leaders, the, pardon me, the apostolic leadership team. And those men of God would come in and they would attempt to address, discipline, or or in uh, some egregious situation, remove Devin and I from leadership in this church. And I want you to know that can happen. So I want to make sure you understand that these men are not members in this church. Um, They're not all members in this church. They're not men. Many of you know each of them and we'll be giving the names Uh, very soon. I don't have that locked in yet and because I don't have it finalized I didn't want to bring names of something that is incomplete today. As soon as that is locked in place we have another meeting with our legal team this week and we're going to finalize most of these names and you'll be hearing these names but I want you to see this today. So that's what the apostolic leadership team team is. Beneath the apostolic leadership team is the board of trustees and on your handout it says the board of trustees will be protected, pardon me Uh, Redemption to the Nations will be protected by trustees. The trustees are appointed by the lead pastors to oversee the finances and direct the provision of the physical facilities needed by the church. They provide counsel to the lead pastors regarding the major, major financial commitments of our church. So the board of trustees serve directly under Devin and I, and they will be the ones who finalize budgets and finalize uh, major decisions that, that the church has been informed of Uh, Their names will be uh, on all of the trustee information that will have to to be signed in the future as we continue to expand. Pardon? And they're members of this church. Thank you. Board of trustees will be members of this church. Number three, uh, actually, pardon me, it's actually number one, but third one down. Staff elders. Redemption to the nations will be guided by staff elders. So the pastoral team is led by the senior pastor. 
This team oversees the day-to-day -day ministry and operations of the church. These staff pastors serve the congregation and are responsible for the development of the spiritual life of the church. The senior pastoral leadership team members serve as staff elders. So every pastor on this church, not everyone on this stage is a pastor. Some are administrators. But the pastors are those that develop the senior staff team, and they are responsible for guiding the day-to-day of this local church and then you will see beneath staff elders you will see two breakouts non-staff elders and deacons so the church is undergirded and supported if you're taking notes four and five supported by deacons and supported by non-staff elders now the deacons in this church are a team from within this congregation full of the holy spirit and here's the key active in ministry in serving the body they exist to serve the church ministries and steward the departmental budgets of the redemption to the nation's church the non-staff elders so the pastors on this stage are staff elders you're following me but there is another layer of spiritual care that is provided in this congregation through non-staff elders and these non-staff elders are in place to provide an additional layer of spiritual care to lead the pastors uh, to the lead pastors and the church body these non-staff elders are dedicated to prayer known for their faithfulness to the house known for their spiritual wisdom and deep care for the church body and service in the ministries of redemption to the nation's church. So directly underneath the elders, uh, the non-staff elders and the deacons, you will see the ministries of the church. And those ministries are covered in prayer and supported by the staff, uh, the non-staff elders and the deacons of our church. We're almost done. So where do we go from here? Ephesians 4.16 says he makes the whole body fit perfectly together. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. If you look at this next slide, you're going to see what, what I call the concentric circle of the church. And uh, if, you will, if you will pay very close attention and listen, I know some people got to go. If you got to go, we love you. Um, and we, we pr praise God for you being here today. But if you'll hang on with me for about, about eight, ten more minutes, we'll be out of here, okay? There are concentric circles that make up this body. And I don't know where you sit or where you are in this circle, but I want to identify this circle for you so that you can determine where you are. And if you're ready to go deeper, we want to make sure you know how to get deeper. Okay? Number one is the community, the unchurched. The people who are part of this community who just come every now and then and some who are not ever coming to church. They're around us. They're in our neighborhood here. And then inside the community is the crowd. The crowd is the people who are just checking us out. And then inside the crowd is the congregation. These are people who are faithful in attendance. They're faithful in paying their tithes. They're faithful in being here when we have services. And then inside the congregation is the committed while the congregation is part of being faithful in attendance, the committed is being faithful in serving. There's a real difference between faithful in attendance and faithful in serving. Can I have an amen? So, so the congregation is committed to being here, but the committed are committed to serving, being faithful in serving here. And then inside the committed is the core, and the core is faithful in leading. Okay, so we have those who are faithful in attending, faithful in serving, faithful in leading if you're on the outside or the crust of this circle and you want to come in closer and be part i want pastor wamari to come and just quickly and she knows this because we're, we're we're trying to do this in a certain amount of time i want pastor Wamari to come and talk about how you and your family can be a part and how you can get connected with what god is doing at redemption to the nations i'm going to stand next to the software team behind them but um, it's okay. So uh, one important thing that Pastor Kevin always uh, let me know was that connection is not just a department at RTTN. Connection is a culture. And so in order to get connected as we were uh, doing these meetings and making sure that we did everything that we knew possible to connect you guys into the core, we just discovered that connection at RTTN occurs through serving through being in a ministry department. So for example, the worship department, which John and Jocelyn and his team lead, 
not only do they um, come on Sunday and lead us into worship, but they meet on Thursday nights and they have uh, worship encounter practices. They also have community nights the fifth Thursday of every month. They have different ways to get discipled. They have different ways to get connected. They have different ways to, to get to know each other and become a family. Redemption Kids is the same way. Actually, every ministry up here is the same way. And while serving is not a requirement for membership, we encourage you to serve so that you become part of a community and yeah. get further connected at RTTN Amen. Church. And so when we go out here after we do the last couple steps, we have um, some sign-up sheets at the Connection Center. Um, and then our staff, all of our team out here is going to be walking around and want to get to know you, want to get to know your family. If you have children that are in Firebrand Age and Redemption Kids and they just don't feel right, I promise you, if you talk to one of our pastoral team on those teams, they're going to want to meet your kid. They're going to want to get them um, included in and a uh, part of our structure. Our desire is that people know that they are part of our team. So we have a couple ways. If you go to the next slide, we have a couple teams that are more, you know, they have worship opportunities, conferences, and different things that happen. Women of Fire is our ladies um, thing. And do you want to talk about Women of Fire? That's our women's ministry now. It's Women of Fire. Of course, we gather together annually for a conference, and then we're doing these Fire by Nights and that will gather uh, quarterly. But this is also the fuel behind the Zion Project. So we as women, we go out there and rescue other women, and we help disciple them and bring them into the family here. We also have uh, Redemption Brothers. They just had their Take the Land. Pastor Roger heads that up. And they have different opportunities throughout the year that they also disciple, get together, encounter Jesus together, and just run with that fire. And then we have four young adults with Pastor Jason and his leadership team. And they meet the first three Thursdays of every month. They also have community and free food for all you young adults, which is really important. And they dive into uh, topics that are amazing. So then we have those. And then we have these serve team ministries which offer jumping points that you can serve okay so worship production first impressions team redemption kids firebrand ushers and safety and the share department and a lot of those have a lot of things to be unpacked but because of time we're not going to do that here so when you come outside into the connection center we have sign up sheets throughout the week on social media and on your packet is um, our emails so that you can start jumping in this is what I say and then I'll end every one of you is a light bulb and we believe in you every one of you have everything that you need to shine bright and we are here we made this portal we made this structure and we want you to plug in so that you can shine bright Amen. and when we all shine bright it says in Ephesians 4 16 that we are in unity and we back up the darkness and we Amen. just want to provide that for you a place for you to shine bright amen thank you pastor Wamari yeah and with the structure, you can see very clearly, and I think this is important for you to know as a church body, um, in order to move um, closer to the core, we are a servanthood church. We are servant leaders. And so you'll find a pattern here is serving is the key to connection. And the way we have organized the non-staff elders, staff elders, deacons, all the way up to the trustees, there will be no one in this church that makes decisions about this body that is not serving. That's right. So it's in, the, it's in the pool of servant leadership that we actually pull leaders out. So you just need to know that everyone who's doing anything in this church to lead, it's because they're serving in departments. And let me say as we close that you may wonder, what is serving? Like, what does that mean? Serving is the fit team, the people that shake your hands, the ushers, the people that work in the lobby, the people that work in the parking lot, that work in the kids department, the youth department, seeing serving is just giving ministry and the love of Jesus away. And there are multiple, multiple places for you to find a place to plug in and to serve other people and to share the love of God. We want you to know that moving forward, that is a very major component of how you get connected here because so many of our people are connected to others by the team they serve with. And if you're not serving, it may feel difficult at times to get connected. And I don't want that for you. I want you to be a part of giving away the love and the life of Jesus that he's poured into your heart. So, so make sure on your way out, and we're getting ready to go in just a minute, there, there are a couple things we need from you today. The first is, in this packet you receive, if you have it lifted up, you've got this packet still. We're going to be gone in three minutes. Um, this, this, pa this pa I know everybody's like, I'm hungry. I promise you, you'll want to stay if you're hungry. I got some for you. Okay? Um, 
This membership covenant is the most important thing in this packet. Okay? It tells what we expect. And I know this sounds strong, but it tells what we expect from people who want to become members of this church. We expect that you will protect the unity of this church. We expect that you will share in the responsibilities of this church. We expect that you will serve the ministry of the church. And you will support the testimony of the church. And there are all those things broken out how we believe that that is manifested. I, I don't have a problem with anybody just coming and wanting to jo enjoy services. But there's something different about saying, this is my church. I'm plugging into this place and I'm going to give my heart, soul, and life here. My family is going to be planted here so that we can flourish here. And I want you to know it's important for us. We're not telling anybody they can't come. We want everybody to come. Even people that don't want to serve, you can come. But you're not going to feel like part of this church family until you are committed to this church. Amen. So we have presented a covenant, a, a family covenant, a church covenant. And you can look over that and read over that. Having received Christ as my Lord and Savior and being in agreement with the values and ideas presented in Connect Track, I feel led by the Holy Spirit to unite with redemption to the nation's church family, and in doing so, I'm going to be committed to this covenant. Okay? If this is how you feel, and this is your church family, and we are all family, and if this is your place where you want to spend your life encountering God and seeing your family grow in the Lord, then I'm going to ask you, and if you're married, your spouse, if there's just one in the family, it will cover all your kids, to fill out this membership covenant, sign it, and Give it to one of the team today. We all have our shirts on. And um, come in, Maury, am I saying it right? No, it's okay. Um, the, you just have to tear off the last page, this the last, last page. sheet right here. Fill it out. And then outside to your left, there's going to be a few tables in RKSM. Um, kids are going to be running it. And when you turn that covenant form in, you get your giveaway. Okay. So here's what's going to happen today. This is going to sound like we're bribing you to join the family. But some of you already have a made-up mind, and we know that. So what we did is everybody who's joining the family today is going to get a T-shirt. We are family. We're going to give one of those to everyone who joins today. And here's the thing. This is for everybody, not just those that join. We have catered in Moss's Catering. And on the way out, you're going to have chicken tenders, baked beans, and coleslaw in a box. And it's on us, absolutely free for everybody in the With building sweet today. Tea. With, With sweet, sweet tea. tea. Come on, somebody. So, so it's just a way of celebrating the goodness of God and the fact that God has blessed us and we're getting ready to see God do something very, very powerful in our church. If you believe that, say amen. And because we lost every single piece of information when we had to transition, we lost all the database, we need you to go to that link, my dot rttnchurch.com and fill out a pro everybody if you've done it already three times I, it's, I promise you this is frustrating I know but we've got to get our database right and we need you to help us with this the important thing is it links your children with the parents your giving statements with the parents if you don't have kids, it just gives us your information so we can connect with you. I promise you we're not going to ask you for this anymore. Yeah. But if you'll do this this one more time, go to my.rttnchurch.com. And to bribe you, I want to reiterate what Wilmari just said. Your giving statement for your taxes comes from that information. So, yes, you will want to do that. For some reason, she felt obliged to tell you that. Okay. I'm just kidding. Listen, how many are thankful we are family? I know this has been a very different day and y'all wanted, you, 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 may, you may have wanted a sermon from someone today, but this is important one time for us to do it like this so that you know what kind of church you're a part of and where our family is going and how many believe our best is yet to come. Come on, say amen. So here's what we're going to do. Let me recap it again. Fill this, fill this sheet out for me and sign it and take it out to the lobby. And when you do, if this is going to be your church family, you're going to get a t-shirt. Okay? But everybody gets to eat. Everybody gets to eat. Okay? We not only need you to fill this out, we need you to fill that profile out. And in filling that out, you're going to help us 
in terms of our uh, bookkeeping and our administration of the logistics and the planning and all of the wonderful things of the church. And then beyond that, you're going to be able to talk to one of the team members about serving opportunities. And I want you to get plugged in serving because the more servants we have in the house of the Lord, the less people we have to wear out doing all the work of the ministry. Stand with me. I see people running to the chicken. You're going you're gonna to have to wait at the end of the line. I'm just kidding. Okay. Let me bless it, and then we're going to go have a great time. Put your smile on. Put your joy on. Let's have a great time of fellowship. The Lord has held off the rain. How many can say praise the Lord for that? And so we have some tables and chairs. We blocked off the road next to us. Go get your t-shirt. Go get your food. Let's have a good time of fellowship. We are family, right? Father, bless the food we're about to receive and bless every person in the church today. Thank you for this house and what you're doing in it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. Go in the peace of the Lord. Can we play the video? Do we have the video on the back to play?